Fighter, as you walk down the street, you run into your old ship captain. He greets you with a smile. Ship captain? What are you talking about? Your background says you were a sailor. Hence, you used to work under a ship captain. He's standing in front of you right now. Oh, well, you know, I, uh, I just, um, well, I took the sailor background to get proficiency in perception, so I didn't really think about this whole ship captain thing. Holy crap, you're really dumb. Rogue. What? The next time you use your city secrets ability to fast travel in the city, you run into a group of street kids you knew back when you were an urchin on the streets. They demand a toll to let you pass. I'll give them a <laughs> toll, all right. Ooh, 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 ooh. Do me next, do me next. Okay, Barbarian, several years ago, when you were still a sage, learning the secrets of the multiverse. Hold on a second. This moron was a sage for his background? Yeah. Well, he can barely read. How is he going to learn the secrets of the multiverse? Hey, listen, Mr. Debbie Downer. Backgrounds don't have any prerequisites, so I can be whatever I want to be. That, that seems like a design flaw. No, no, no. This works. It does. We could just say that when the barbarian was a sage, he fell out of his tower and landed on his head. Yeah, yeah, that explains it. Oh, yeah, that sounds great. <clears throat> I have a question for our illustrious dungeon master. What was your background? Oh, well, before I became a dungeon master, I was a serial killer. And I was responsible for the murder of dozens of victims, and I was never caught. Ooh, that sounds like fun. Yeah, and it also makes him highly qualified to be our dungeon master. Welcome to the DM Lair. I'm Luke Hart, and I've been a Dungeon Master since high school. On this channel, I give practical Dungeon Master advice that you can use in your D&D games. Today in the Lair, I'll be discussing how Dungeon Masters can use backgrounds, not backstories, but backgrounds, in their D&D games. Backgrounds are found in Chapter 4 of the Player's Handbook and include choices such as Acolyte, Criminal, Soldier, Sailor, and Urchin. It's like everybody takes Urchin, too, because it gives you, like, Thieves tools and like stealth and like lots of cool stuff. Such a good choice. We've all heard about using backstories in our D&D games, though I still plan on doing a video on that someday. But how to use backgrounds isn't really talked about a whole lot, at least not that I've seen. So yeah, today we're gonna hit that. But real quick, I want to remind you that you can find tons of free D&D resources over on my site, thedmlayer.com. I have new magic items, cool NPCs, interesting and devious traps, and even entire 5th edition adventures that you can use over at thedmlayer.com. I also want to take a moment to thank the latest batch of new patrons that help keep the lights on around here. Cilia S, B Gray, Amber S, Brian the Lion, Cockadoodle Doo, Brian Z, thanks Tashio, Tony M, Rebecca M, Avernus of Hades, Lori S, Shifi98, Kiriako S, and Threezool. Apologies if I mispronounced any of your names. Not only do my patrons help support all of the free content I create for the community, but they also get lots of cool perks, such as a monthly PDF stuffed with high quality Dungeon Master resources, voting on videos that I make, access to a patron only Discord channel, and even hanging out with me on Zoom every month. That sounds like something you might be interested in. Check out that beautiful link to my Patreon down below. All right, now on to using backgrounds. Number one, use backgrounds to award inspiration. This is in fact the standard way to use PC backgrounds. Basically, when the players roleplay their character's personality trait, ideal, bond, or flaw, the Dungeon Master awards them with inspiration. For instance, a character who is a folk hero has the trait, I misuse long words in an attempt to sound smarter. So when the player is roleplaying their PC and they do those things, misuse like long words and stuff, they get inspiration. I, I misuse words all the time. I should get inspiration. <laughs> I mispronounce them especially. Or the character might have the noble as a background and they have the bond, I will face any challenge to win the approval of my family. And then when the PC faces down three thugs who call them out, even though they'll probably lose, they would get inspiration. Now, now, quick tip for you here. It is hard to know all of the traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws of all of the PCs in your game. So I tell my players to just let me know when they are role playing one of them and then I can give them inspiration. Quick tip here, I, I need to mention this as well because 
According to the rules, inspiration must be declared before you roll, and then you roll with advantage. You don't get to roll a d20, see the result, and then decide to roll another d20 and take the better of the two. That is far more powerful than inspiration is described in the rules as written. If you wanna do it that way, it's okay. Just be aware that that's not how it's supposed to work and it's much more powerful that way. I mention this because I see groups doing this all the time, and I think it's not because they've chosen to, but because they just misunderstand how inspiration is supposed to work, rules is written. Number two, create situations based on the PC background. Now, now you don't need to know the details of their backstory for this. What we're doing here is creating these situations based on the high level information of the background itself. And this is gonna come in very, very handy when you have players who don't write backstories who don't go to the effort of that, or, or what they do write just isn't very useful. If you know what their background is, you can still do something with that. Now, these situations that you write out based on their background might be bad, others might be neutral, and some of them might be good. And I'm gonna give you a bunch of examples here to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Let's pretend your character has the entertainer background. We could say that there is, for instance, a jealous bard who wants to end competition, and thus you create a rival entertainer that that character might run into from time to time. Or you might have a wealthy customer who complains to the innkeeper who's in the entertainer is playing at, because you know they always wanna like play at an inn, get free room and board and that sort of thing. And then the innkeeper kicks you out and tells the other innkeepers not to employ you. The entertainer that is. Or let's say that your player's character is a folk hero. We could say that somebody from the PC's home village always resented them. They raised up a following that hated the PC and now they've come looking to take the PC down. Or we could say that tales of the character and their, and their folk hero background have extended to the town that they are now in. And a few people in that town know the character or have heard of them at least, and they invite them to a few drinks. All right, let's say that your background was a guild artisan. The PC's reputation, good or ill, precedes them. We could say that, for instance, merchants in the town are worried that competition may have just arrived in the form of the guild artisan, and they raise prices 10% on the party. Or the guild artisan, while walking through the market, notices an item being sold that they created just a few months back. Or perhaps a local guild is actively trying to recruit the PC because they heard about them from their previous guild. You see, I can literally go through every background in the player handbook and brainstorm possible situations, good and bad, that could happen based on a PC's background, and I don't need to know anything about their backstory. Which is why this technique is perfect for players who don't create backstories, or the backstories they do create don't give you a whole lot to work with. Number three, create situations based on the characteristics in a PC's background. The first thing you might do is challenge their ideals. So an outlander has an ideal, the strongest are meant to rule. See how that character reacts when they see a street bully mistreating someone weaker than they are. Or when a tribe of hobgoblins is ruling over a town of simple farmers. Are they gonna be okay with that because technically it's their ideal or are they going to try to interfere? You will see the caliber of role playing that your player is going to deploy based on that situation. And you can create story elements that deal with their bonds. For instance, you have a sailor whose bond is, I'm loyal to my captain first everything else second. So you have their former captain come to them requesting help with something and see how that character responds. And an urchin has a bond. I escaped my life of poverty by robbing an important person and I'm wanted for it. So you have that person come back into the picture looking for justice. And then you can create situations that touch on their flaws. So you have a soldier who has the flaw. I have little respect for anyone who is not a proven warrior. So you have an aristocrat from the city begin to give them order, somebody who is not proven in battle and you see how your character responds. Or you have some warrior type NPCs run into the soldier and create a little scene there where they can talk and bond and maybe that turns into an adventure. Next, when a flaw arises, use it later to bring consequences. If that soldier disrespects the aristocrat, he's not just gonna take it. Instead, he'll take it upon himself to make the soldier's life difficult, possibly even causing legal problems for him. Number four, put a twist on their background features. Think of ways to to complicate or make more interesting the PC's usage of their background features. 
This does involve creativity and planning, of course. Many of these things I'm talking about involve creativity and planning. For instance, you have an urchin who is using city secrets to travel faster through the back alleys of a city. And when they do that, you have a chart that you roll on to see if there are any complications, such as running into a criminal band who is also slipping through the alleys. Or let's say you have a sailor who is using ship's passage to get free transportation. Well, that's great and all, but midway through the voyage, the captain puts in at a cove in a small island and requests assistance from the PCs in recovering some supplies from a hidden stash. And there turns out to be someone else at the stash who isn't pleased to see them. Number five, create drama and interesting situations. Ultimately, this is one of the main jobs of the Dungeon Master, to create drama, a problem or dilemma that the players need to solve, and to create interesting situations that the players must navigate. So you use backgrounds and all the details baked into them to do just that. Now, yes, many times the situation you create will be problematic for the player or the group as a whole, but that's just the nature of the job. If there are no problems, there are no adventures, and there is no game to play. I mean, unless you're playing a completely different type of D&D than I'm familiar with. But again, again, not all situations have to be negative. Don't let them all be negative. Some should just be a nod toward their backgrounds. Others should be positive and work in their benefit. Remember, if you'd like to get monthly Dungeon Master resources such as magic items, interesting NPCs, and entire D&D adventures that you can use for your groups, don't forget to check out my Patreon. This monthly PDF is just one of many benefits my patrons receive. Also, if you love nachos and would like to see me eat an entire plate of nachos in my next video while I speak, click that thumbs up button down below. Also, leave a comment for the algorithm so YouTube knows that I don't suck. Next week, I'll be telling you the story of my second TPK ever, hopefully while I eat nachos. But until then, click right here to learn about running D&D at higher levels. And until next time, let's play D&D.